Greetings from the GNU Linux Users Group and ID Durga to everyone. I am Ayush Bhartia, presenting before you all one of the most awaited events of GNU Linux Users Group, the GSOC Heat Park M7.0. In this event, we would be briefing you all over the guidelines and rules of Google Summer of Code, which is a global event hosted by Google every year to introduce new enthusiastic contributors to the world of open source software development. GSOC contributors work with an open source organization and contribute to their projects. Throughout this session, we will not only be exploring about what GSOC is, but we will also be letting you guys know about the steps you need to follow to contribute to those projects and to participate in GSOC. So without further ado, let's get started. So what is GSOC? Google Summer of Code is a global online program hosted by Google every year which focuses on bringing new contributions and contributors and student developers into open source software development. GSOC contributors work with an open source organization on a 12 plus week programming project under the guidance of project mentors nominated by the respective organizations. There are a total of 800 plus amazing open source organizations participating in GSOC this year. During Google Summer of Code, participating contributors are paired with mentors from open source organizations gaining exposure to real-world software development techniques. Contributors will learn from experienced open source developers while writing code for real-world projects. A small stipend is also provided as an incentive. Participating organizations use the program to identify and bring in new excited developers. Many of those new developers will continue to contribute to their new communities and open source long after GSOC is over. However, there are some changes in GSOC guidelines this year. Let us go through them thoroughly so that you guys are more informed about which projects to pursue in the upcoming GSOC. Increased flexibility in project lengths 10 to 22 weeks, not a set 12 weeks for everyone. Last year, it was a set 12 weeks for every contributor to contribute in a project. So increased flexibility in project lens allowed many people to be able to participate and to not feel rushed as they wrapped up their projects. We have 109 GSOC contributors wrapping up their projects over the next three weeks. Choice of project time commitment, there are now two options, medium at 175 hours approximate or large at 350 hours approximate with 47% and 53% GSOC contributors respectively. Again, the third and the important changes in GSOC 2023 this year includes being open to contributors new to open source software development and not just to students anymore. Last year, it was just open for students. For 2023 this year, we are expanding the program to be open to students and to beginners in open source software development. From 2023, GSOC is expanding the program to be open to students and to beginners in open source software development. So now I would be briefing you about the timeline of the Google Summer of Code 2023. On February 22, 2023 at 11.30 pm, we have all the accepted organizations announced. On March 20, 2023 at 11.30 pm, we have all the contributor proposals open so that the contributors can drop in their proposals. On April 4, 2023, 11.30 pm, the proposal deadline gets end. On May 3, 2023, at 8.30 pm, the slot allocation deadline is announced. On May 3rd again, 2023, 11.30 pm, all the projects are announced to the organizations. On May 4th, 2023, 11.30 p.m., all the accepted projects are announced. On May 4th, 2023, at 11.30 p.m., all the accepted projects are announced. On November 17, 2023, the very D-Day, at 11.30 p.m., the entire GSOC program ends. So now that all of you are familiar with the entire structure and timeline of GSOC, it's time to talk about one of the most important things for getting you selected in GSOC program, the project proposal. Potential GSOC contributors contact the mentor organizations they want to work with and write a project proposal based on ideas the organization has suggested. Once accepted, 
GSOC contributors spend a few weeks becoming familiar with the community norms and code base while determining expected milestones with their mentor for the summer. GSOC contributors then spend a 12 plus weeks coding entire period on their projects. Every project repo has two files namely readme.md and contributing.md. You should go through these two files thoroughly and also through the issues section of the respective repository so as to get an overview of the project. Now I would be explaining you on how to write a sample proposal. The first page of the sample proposal should contain the title Google Summer of Code along with the title of your respective repository or the project. The first page should also contain your name, your email ID as well as your GitHub ID. Coming on to the second page of your sample proposal, it should contain your personal details, your technical knowledge as well as your previous experience. Your personal details should include your name, your university name, your email, your phone number, your website, your country of residence, your time zone, your primary language and so and so forth. Your technical knowledge may include your languages you are familiar with, the frameworks you have worked with, the libraries, the tools you have used in your respective projects earlier as well as your relevant courses which you have covered. Your previous experience may include all the interns and all the projects you have worked with earlier. The very next page then should include the project statement and the current status of the project as well as all the issues and the ideas which you are going to contribute to the project. In the next page we have over here the diagram of the project explaining about all the workings of the project. The fourth section of your sample proposal should contain the abstract idea which you are going to implement in the project as an open source contribution. Here we have building the graph, building the binary graph, Python solution API, Python solution API testing, Android H Arch archive library, Python solution API, Python solution API testing as well as Android archive library generating the AR file and so and so forth. The next page again the fifth portion of the sample proposal should contain the timeline about how you would be going to contribute to the project in which week what work what contribution you are going to contribute in the project <coughs> see here in the sample proposal we have all the weeks divided along with the contributions that the contributor is going to contribute in the project the sixth part is the QA which is the general the sixth part of the sample proposal should contain the QA part containing questions like whether you have participated in GSOC earlier or whether you are planning to contribute after the GSOC period as well, why they should choose you and why you should apply to any other organization for GSOC 2023. So hello everyone, my name is Partha Banerjee and now that you are all familiar with the entire process of applying to GSOC, it's time to get you guys ready for the actual event that you are going to participate in. And for that we have one of the most coveted events of GLUG, the GSOC Heat 7.0. So what is GSOC Heat? GSOC Heat is a kind of replicated self-hosted GSOC event hosted by the GNU Linux users group in order to get aspiring GSOCers accustomed to the entire environment and culture of GSOC. It is actually a scaled down version of GSOC designed exclusively for beginners will be giving you guys constant support and guidance from skillful mentors and previous GSOCers. It is an amazing opportunity to evaluate your skills and practice for the real Google Summer of Code. And we have a wide spectrum of technologies for you guys to choose from going starting from HTML CSS to more complex tracks like Node.js, Django. So what if you guys want to contribute to GSOC Heat? Here's something you will need to keep in mind, the timeline. First and foremost, the proposal period starts today. You guys can start submitting your proposals. I'm sure you guys by, by this point know what your proposal is and what are the things that you guys need to include in your proposal. Finally, the proposal period ends on 20th February. Next, from 21st to 28th February, we'll be having the mentoring period and the contributing period. You guys will be making open source contribution to your selected project during this time. And finally, on March 3rd, we'll be releasing the list of all successful submissions. 
throughout this entire term our mentors will be mentoring you guys on how to make successful con open source contributions and how to make your profiles much more attractive to companies participating in gsoc finally the time i guess uh, all of you might be waiting for the projects for this year well here they are first let us just give a quick rundown of all that is available first and foremost we have uh, the twitter clone which is based on the text stacks of html and css this is one of the very greatest project for beginners you guys if even if you don't know html css you can quickly learn it and start contributing to this very awesome clone project next up we have the typing test website which is based on html css and javascript using various elements of javascript to take input from the user and test testing their typing speed next up for all those front end fanatics out there we have the project markdown notes based on react js then for all those who know python and are familiar with its its web development framework django we have the block site project finally for all those who know node js we have the ipl auction app taking in elements from the entire mern stack now we'll be giving you a demo of each of these projects as well as explanation of how each of these project works hello everyone welcome to the twitterclon website it's made using of html and css so you can see it is totally scrollable and if i go to the inspect you can also see that it's also have the css view of the tab view which is also responsive responsive for the tab and if i change to the phone you can also see it is also responsive for the phone size so that means it is responsive for all the screen sizes and it's You can also you can also see that this whole feature is also added here. Thank you. So welcome to the HTML CSS JS project, and uh, for this we have the typing speed tester. And uh, as you can see in the first page, you can see some set of informations. And in first uh, first when the website loads up, you have to enter your name. then you have to select the difficulty and then proceed uh, then you get some uh, rules and then uh, you have the option to start the test so after clicking it the timer starts and you get a set of words which are randomly generated which we are fetching from a uh, package which we are fetching from a json file so after that <laughs> you need to just type the words right and then uh, you have to submit then the timer stops and then you have the option to view the results after clicking that you get uh, all the statistics that you want to see about your performance uh, you get the score uh, with words per minute then you get uh, the score with penalty uh, which you, whichever word you have uh, written wrong uh, for that the penalty is given then <coughs> here it gives you the statistics about the correct words and the errors you have made then it gives how much penalty has been added to it and the total score that you can get so <coughs> this was all about the html css javascript project uh, i hope that uh, uh, you uh, put in your uh, code in the poll request and uh, solve the issues in your own innovative way uh, the issues can be seen in the uh, github repo the issue section of the github repo for uh, till then uh, uh best of luck and may the souls be with uh, be with you this is a markdown text editor website made in react i would log into this website with an email id that does not already exist and try to sign in the user does not exist it says so i will create the user by signing up sign up and yeah here comes the markdown text editor site it has the markdown text and the preview let's start writing our own markdown in markdown we can bold 
a text using if you need to import a link we can do the do, do that in this way or if you want to import an image we can do it this way so this is our markdown text editor i can i have the word counts character counts and the time of read i can also log out from this side by log out and i get back to this sign up page hello everyone this is a blog project made on Django, HTML, and CSS. Here you can see this is the home page of the website. And this is my blog section, where only your blogs will appear here. And this is a category. You can search by category. Uh, see, this is a coding category, technology, and news. Uh, by listing here, you can see these are the blogs related to coding. And you can also create your blogs using this page. Uh, suppose I am creating a random blog. Now you can see the blog is created, and then you are seeing to the Excel Center. This is the profile page. Here you can see your files appear as you log in. Uh, this is a profile. These are the social icons related to your profile, and you can also change your password. Now, this is your contact section and this is about section. And thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Sahadat and this is the demo video for the project IPL option system. So there are two options, sign up and login. So from the sign up option, you can create your account. I have already created one, so I will go for login. In the login, I will I put my details and password and I will log in to it. After that you will see that this is the main main part of our project, main page of the project. Um, there are four tabs running options, sold players, unsold players and so all the players. Uh, you can also log out and there is another page which is the admin admin page okay so in the sign up option you will see that there is a checkbox for are you admin if you check it say you will create an admin user who who will who can access an admin page so i have already created an admin uh, so i can log in from that and then So this is how a admin page looks like. It will list out all the players that we have, and we can start the bidding of the particular player from here. Like uh, this is a, this is another tab, and I will log in from different user from here. So. If I now click on the start button, the option for this player will start. So now that all of you are familiarized with the entire process of GSOC Heat as well as the projects we have online for you guys, it's time to register now and start your open source journey. We thank all of you for joining us in this session. Hope you like the bar cam and hope you do contribute to all of our projects. Do make sure to follow us on all of our social handles so that you guys are updated with all the news related to GSOC Heat that we have as well as all the upcoming events that we have in line for all of you guys. This is Partha Banerjee. Thank you everyone. May the source be with you.